Hello YouTubers, 0 to 100 here. And today I'm doing the test ride of the all new 2016 Africa Twin, the CRF 1000L. Now I've just picked it up at the Honda dealership. I have uh, it for a short test ride and um, I thought I'd first do the walk around and uh, already getting on the bike and comparing to the Honda Cross Tourer, it feels like a lot smaller bike. I'm not sure it is. I mean, it feels narrower. It is. It feels lighter, of course. Uh, the Honda Cross Tourer is a 1200 cc engine. This is a parallel twin, the Cross Tour is a V4, this is a parallel twin, so of course there is a size and weight difference. But this bike, the first, my very first impression of this is that it feels like you're riding an off-road bike, it's that amazing. I mean, I just got on for 10 minutes and already I can see that it feels and behaves like an off-road. And it's the first time I've ridden it. It is a fantastic and beautiful bike. I love it. Um, I love the front, the tires. It comes with the uh, standard, uh, the Dunlop. And uh, it's got a 21 inch in front, uh, 90 by 90. The back, it's a 150. 70 18 inch um, this is the uh, red version and the automatic gearbox and let me start it up it's got a beautiful sound i love the sound so this is the uh, dct version and it's the third generation DCT. So what I noticed about this bike, the Cross Tourer has the handbrake over here. And uh, you might think that this is the clutch, but it's actually the handbrake. Now you can't reach it with your hand and mistake it for the clutch. It's actually quite a clever way where to put it. So this is actually the handbrake. It looks like the clutch, but it's not because this is the full, fully automatic uh, gearbox, the DCT version. But uh, they've put the handbrake over here. Now you can't mistake it because it's just too far, yeah? But if you park it in a slope being the uh, DCT, of course, it will require the, um, the handbrake. The instrumentation, the instrumentation, the instrumentation itself is also very different. So it's got the uh, display um, that's not as backlit as the Honda Cross Tourer. I don't know if you can see that, but um, it has your rev bar, your speed, petrol, uh, temperature. It shows the gears. It, you can switch ABS back, ABS off. It's got. Um, both road and off-road um, traction settings. Um, it's got your average speed. Air temperature. Let's see what else it's got. So average consumption, trip distance, average speed etc let's change and see what happens there uh, elapsed so uh, time riding and uh, that's about that's about it and of course you've got your engine temperature and your traction control here you have your uh, drive and uh, or dynamic and sports mode your neutral this uh, automatic and manual switch uh, you do have the choice, of course, to drive in uh, automatic or manual. If you drive and if you select manual, you have the options 
to change gears uh, downwards here and upwards here through these levers. Right, so without its uh, final drive is, is chain drive. Um, so let's go for a ride. Let's go for a ride and let's see how this baby handles. I've heard very good, very good comments about this bike. They say that it is fantastic. And uh, I must tell you that in the short ride here, it was very, very different to the uh, Honda Cross Tourer. Okay. So, I think this is slightly lower than the Cross Tourer, yeah? It definitely feels much lighter and lower than the uh, Cross Tourer. So, I'm going to whack it into gear now through the uh, DCT. There we go, and it's ready to ride. It's got quite a nice sound to it. And again, the uh, dual clutch transmission is seamless. You don't need to worry about gear changes. There's plenty power in the uh, 1000 uh, cc engine. The wind, the wind protection of this screen is actually very, very good. Yes, I'm getting a little bit of buffeting on the helmet, but I get that on the cross tour as well, even with the, uh, even with the um, little mod screen that I've got. So let's go for a ride on the motorway then we'll go a little bit for uh, uh, in the city and then we will come back here so i don't see as much of the honda cross tourer as with the crf so it looks like the front end is is lower I love the, the sound of the uh, parallel twin. Oops, police. The uh, rear view mirrors serve its purpose, of course. You can see everything that's going on behind you. I think the uh, cross tour is a little bit nicer. It's a little bit better visibility towards the back end. Yeah, this is all right. This has definitely got some kick to it. Very, very nice. Acceleration is there when you need it. I mean, I reached 150 in uh, no time whatsoever. Look at that. Nice. Power wise, it's all you'll need. And again, I'm really surprised with the uh, wind protection. I'm not getting anything in my body here. A little bit of buffeting just above the visor. But uh, I, think it's, I think it's good. I think it's uh, perfect. Now the bike itself, It's really comfortable. Brakes are good. The sitting position is uh, upright and a uh, very, very comfortable bike. There's nothing in the, the way. The, the instrumentation is very visible.
it does handle nicely around the corners you can see that already very very nice Very, very nice. Yes, I must say I am impressed. I am recording. It just feels like a proper off-road bike, but you can still take it anywhere. I mean, I'm riding in the city and I feel that uh, I could cruise with this uh, on the motorway and everything else. It's that comfortable. I'm going to go straight. Let's ride this baby. So yeah, I think that uh, this will make for a, a really, really good all-purpose enduro touring bike. And I mean, this for the city is nice. It's not as big or as heavy as the cross tourer the cross tourer is nice of course for uh, for touring but this for the city and uh, those of you that really really want to go extreme and uh, really go to rough terrain this is the bike with a reputation to do that i believe it's a really really good off-roader i'm no off-road expert and wow look at that wow man this standing position on this bike is perfect i mean i have my legs not that wide open on the foot pegs still able to reach the brakes and i just feel like i'm an off-road professional it's nice it's it's designed for that it's 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 that good. Wow. Honda. Well done. This is an amazing bike. Really. I feel like so confident on this machine. And I and like I said, I'm not an off-road person. Uh, I don't have I lack the experience. I've taken uh, the cross tour of course on um, uh, off-road on the dirt and uh, I love it, it can handle it, it's designed to handle it, but uh, I wouldn't go to the extreme of really riding it crazy on the dirt, yeah? I mean, if I'm on a tour and uh, I have to go off-road, I'm not afraid to do that with a cross-tourer. I would be if I was on a, on a, on a sports bike but not on the cross tour now with this thing I would even be more adventurous and uh, take it all over the place uh, I feel that it's much more maneuverable than, uh, than the cross tour it's a different bike um, yeah the Africa Twin has really got a reputation and I understand why look at that Wow! Yeah, this is really that good. What else can I tell you? So, uh, the fuel consumption on this bike is showing 7 liters to the 100. Wow, that is a little bit uh, heavy. I mean, uh, I'm doing that on the 1200cc engine on the Honda Cross Tour. Uh, okay, I guess it's a new bike. The guys are pushing it a little bit. So the consumption uh, is slightly higher. I guess that um, you should be coming in uh, less than that. But 
It's really great. Let me put this on uh, sports mode and let's see what happens, yeah? Bar is a dog, sir. So, uh, yeah, let's put this thing in sports mode. It gives the revs up higher. Wow. So yeah, like the uh, like the uh, DCT on the Honda Cross Tour uh, sports mode, just holds and pushes the revs up higher. Uh, keeps it in gear longer, uh, so you get uh, everything out of the um, uh, of that gear. Yeah, so it probably would just before it redlines on around 8,000 uh, revs. It then whacks it into gear. Yeah, now if you ride it normally, uh, you can feel it's got more torque. Of course, the sportier mode is uh, a nice mode for. Like I said in my previous video, those that haven't seen my DCT review, please have a look. It's on YouTube. Uh, the Sports CEO mode uh, does much better, of course, with the uh, engine braking for uh, twisties in the, in the mountain passes. Um, you just have that power almost wheeling um, on the sports mode. Dynamic mode is more for your everyday commuting where it's just uh, there as an economic um, setting for your bike. So it goes through the gears quite quickly. And um, of course, so there is a little bit of uh, fuel saving considerations because uh, it keeps the engine revs low, unlike sports mode. If you need and want to, you can see it just climbs and it's in third at the moment and uh, it will climb until it has uh, the gear change fourth that it needs yeah so uh, I'm loving this bike already I'm not going to take it off road Let's put it back in dynamic mode. I don't need to be so aggressive here in the uh, in the city. I'm feeling like just taking it and going to rides in this open terrain, man. That's how confident I am with this bike. Wow. And uh, I must be honest, I love the sound. I really do love the sound of, uh, of this bike, yeah. Yeah, so I guess the only downside that I can think of um, is I'm not into the chain maintenance on uh, long journeys. Yeah, when I take a break, I want to stop, have a cup of coffee, stretch my legs, relax. I don't want to be worried about having to uh, oil the chain and so forth. And, you know... Uh, so the shaft on the cross tourer was one of the big reasons why I bought the cross tourer. This final, the, the, the Africa Twin final drive is chain. And yes, I know that you can get the Scott Euler, which is uh, something that reduces the maintenance on the chain. And of course, you don't need to worry about servicing the chain as often with the Scott Euler. And it's really... A good tool those of you that uh, don't know uh, look it up it's really great my friends use it but uh, it does not help you when uh, you are doing off-road riding in the mud getting the chain all dirty you still have to 
then with Scott Euler or no Scott Euler, you still need to do the chain maintenance, clean it up, re-oil it and get it ready for the uh, next trip. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm not lazy or anything. It's just if I have the option that I don't need to do this with the shaft, of course, you don't. It's maintenance free riding, which is why I got it in the first place. So I forget this bike does not have the uh, flicker cancellation, the automated uh, flicker cancelling. So if I forget the flickers on the cross tour, uh, it's got an auto cancel option. This one doesn't. So I've got to be aware not to ride with the flicker all the time. Those of you that uh, don't know the DCT, so the dual clutch transmission on the new Honda bikes, like I said, this is the third generation. This has got um, different riding modes. And I would really strongly recommend that you do yourself a favor and actually take one of these DCT bikes. I know that you old school guys are saying, yeah, I still prefer to be in control in the clutches and uh, yeah, I don't trust technology. Do yourself a favor, try it. It's that good. So, um, yeah. I could really see myself riding this bike every single day to work with no problem. I mean, I don't have a problem with a cross tourer. I would like to preserve it a little bit. I do love the bike. It's an excellent bike. But uh, this feels to me more like an everyday bike. It's expensive. I mean, uh, here in uh, Poland, it's around 60,000 zloty for this bike. It is uh, expensive. I mean, it's almost the same price as the uh, uh, Cross Tourer. So, uh, it is a large investment to have two big bikes in the garage. But um, I wouldn't be disappointed having this in the garage, I can tell you that. Power and performance wise, I mean, uh, yeah, the uh, Cross Tour uh, does have a lot more G's to it when you open the throttle. This is not far behind, let me tell you that. It's not far behind, but uh, you can see the difference between the uh, V4 and the uh, 1000. Uh, you must remember this is a twin, that it is a V4. and. Uh, the uh, power delivery on the V4 is a lot smoother than uh, this baby. But it is impressive nevertheless. Look at that. That was full throttle and I reached 140 in no time. So more than you will ever need. Even in dynamic mode. Remember I'm in dynamic mode at the moment. And uh, that's just amazing, yeah? Really. 
bike itself power wise is smooth you've got the torque where you need it I can feel that it's got a lot more uh, low down torque it stays that's in sports mode and uh, you open the throttle aggressively and of course from fifth it gear down to third and it's staying in third at the moment because I am in sports mode but um, quite comfortably riding it in town with no difficulties weaving in and out of traffic as you can see it's very well balanced it's a very very well balanced bike and uh, you can actually feel the confidence of this bike this bike gives you confidence look at this nice bike alright I'm going to stop talking now and I'm just going to enjoy the rest of the ride because there is nothing else that I can tell you about this bike that you do not already know. I've got the showroom walk around. You can have a look at that. It's got some of the technical specs on there. Suspension is not too soft. So it dips, in my opinion, when you press the front brake just enough. It is adjustable, of course. The back suspension is good. You don't feel the bumps at all on this bike. It's, here's a bump. Yeah, it's nice, it's comfortable. Good suspension. So over here, there's a lever right that sets the traction control so you have three variations aggressive medium and low of course low it doesn't allow for any wheel spin but uh, allows you to accelerate almost to the level where you will pick up the front wheel and uh, with the highest setting it's uh, just starts cutting out the engine to prevent the uh, wheel spin altogether so it's a big difference of course those of you that do off-road will probably switch it off or put it on the lowest setting It's a really good all-rounder. It's a really, really good all-rounder. And like I said, you can do a lot with this bike. A really lot with this bike. And I hope that this video is going to be all fine. I am still recording, yeah. What a machine, really. I love it. What a machine.
the handling on this is really superb, really superb. I'm 1.8 meters tall, and uh, I feel so at home with this, with this, with this bike. Oh. Excellent sound. I can't get over that sound. It's nice. So, in sports mode, it does tend to keep the gears longer. I'm going to work back to dynamic mode. Man, I could see, I could see having a lot of off-road fun with this bike. And I guess the biggest difference here is that I wouldn't necessarily do the off-road adventures with the Cross Tourer. But if I had this, I would definitely do the off-road. It feels like an off-road scrambler. The standing position, everything, the center of gravity, the way the handle bikes are positioned, the smaller front tank area. Nice, nice Honda. Like I said, I would definitely be more adventurous with this bike in the dirt. Whereas I wouldn't with the cross tourer. Now the seating, there's a lot of space. It's very good. So the G here, the salesman, I haven't read up on it, but uh, the salesman told me that that is your off-road uh, traction settings. So you're, uh, I'm now riding as if I would be on uh, a gravel road. I'm not going to try that out today. And everything is set on the fly, as you can see. Besides that, you've got the selection mode here, which uh, can go through some of your uh, settings. So that's air temperature. Of course, you can select down and go to your consumption, your trip, average speed, and so forth and so forth. This bike's done 511 kilometers in total on the odometer, so uh, it is a new bike. It is constantly booked on Saturdays for eight hours. That's how much interest this bike has got. Nice, really nice.
Okay. So my other battery ran dry. I think I've got enough footage, I hope. So this is the bike, of course. I'm leaving now and I couldn't just leave it unfinished. So I'm leaving the Honda dealership now and I'm back on my bike. And uh, what, a, what a bike. The Africa Twin, really excellent bike. I love it. I think the biggest difference between uh, the Africa Twin and the Haas and the Cross Tourer, uh, both lovely machines. DCT, of course, being the third generation is a lot better, in my opinion. The uh, Africa Twin is a lot lighter. It is a smaller engine. It does not have the shaft. And immediately when you get on that bike, you can feel that it is made for off-road. When you get on this bike, it's heavier. You can feel it. And um, you know that this is going to be an excellent all-day tourer and I, I guess that's the only thing that I can summarize for now I had one hour with the bike and uh, I am impressed it's really good this thing still has a lot more power but at the end of the day I guess they are two completely different bikes, yeah? And uh, I love the Africa Twin. I do love this one as well. Would I buy the Africa Twin? I think yes. Would I trade this one in for the Africa Twin for that price? I don't think so. But I'd love to have both. Can I recommend the Africa Twin as an excellent enduro? Absolutely yes. It is a wow factor. Try it out. The DCT is really good. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your comments. Subscribe. It's free. Help a guy, help a guy grow his channel. And um, more of these videos coming soon now that uh, the temperature is warmer and I can get out more often. Let me know if there's anything that you want me to film, any reviews you want me to consider, and uh, that's it from me. Zero to 100, over and out. Bye bye.